You know, out of nearly 50 guides, I think this may actually be the first video centered on a specific non-big bad mob within the game. And in case you can't read no good like me, that mob is none other than the hippity hoppity bunny men that call the deep dark caves home. We will not only discuss the proper ways to handle the beasts, I will also showcase a couple ways of using them to your advantage. Without further ado, let's hop right to it. For your best chance of locating some, heading into and exploring the foresty biomes down under is the likely way to go, as you'll find an abundance waiting for you. However, the villages can also be found among the mush tree forests as well, so keep an eye out for them there. In my experience, you either get a crap ton spawning around the map, or an annoyingly small number. But before we move further, you must make a big mental note here. If you are handling the bunnies, make sure you are either aware of the presence of meat in your inventory, or just get rid of it entirely. Because if you don't, you may end up feeling like the hottest girl in school during prom night with everyone chasing you. And you may be waking up with more than a headache in the morning, if you know what I mean. That being said, no one appears to mind you waving your meat around suspiciously. You can wheel the hand bat and be completely fine in the soulless eyes of the carrot munchers. Don't ask me why, or how it makes any sense, it just does. But let's talk murder and stealing, yes, two of my favorite pastimes. You'll need a hammer and I recommend it being day, because, you see, Bunny men only congregate at dusk and night, so hammering and killing them one hutch at a time during the morning is the safest and most efficient method. Be mindful though, bunny men will actually flee combat once their health gets low, and their health will actually regenerate. But if it's morning still, you can just let them run a bit and they'll fall asleep, allowing for some sleepy time ambushes. You may have noticed me not gathering the loot right after smashing. That is to maximize the daylight and handle each bunny and hutch one at a time before the whole party decides to roll up. Do you see my health? That was with me being careful. Yes, I obviously could have kited, but still, they hit hard. So I'd rather fight one over and over again than deal with a dozen or more all at once. Then, when it's safe, you gather all the spoils. Cause when it comes time to use them, you'll be using a lot of them. About every two hutches hammered will equal one for you to craft yourself. But the limiting factors will remain the carrots and bunny puffs. But amassing either really isn't hard, just a bit time consuming. But speaking of carrots... Carrots are what you need to use to turn these hoppers in the choppers for ya. Just like pigs, bunny men can be befriended to your advantages. Like when it comes to fighting for ya, and with their high damage, they'll do great work and do it quickly. But why stop there? Why not just sick them on one another just like you can do with the pigs up above? But before we head up ourselves, let me introduce you to Beard Lords, a variation of our lovely bunny friends. When your sanity drops below 40%, bunny men will become Beard Lords and change their looks. They'll have a negative sanity aura of minus 40 per minute and actually won't return to their homes in this state. Other than that, they are still neutral like their brethren and can still be befriended. They will also deal slightly more damage in this state as well. Enough talk of what they can do down below. Bring the lot upstairs and construct a living quarters above. Then feed them and create the chaos that is family in fighting. Netting you more meat, veg, and puffs for your pleasure. 
Just be careful about accidentally picking up meat and having them turn on you. It ain't pretty. But what is pretty is ingenuity. And I'll show you why with a cheeky little advanced farming technique using all this crap you see here. In short, fire from staff attempts burns all the thingies while flingos say no no to the flames. That's the scientific explanation at least. So what you'll want to do is get their attention best with meat in inventory, then run them down the line in order to get them in range of your contraption. Soon enough, you'll have a load of hopsicles ready to be farmed. And well done, you are now taking part in one of the craziest, most efficient farms in Don't Starve history. Now. It'll be a bit tricky with ones on the edges, but you'll want to start murdering only when the flingos are flinging, as it'll allow for a semi-perma-stun effect on the bunnies, making your life incredibly easier as you go about killing them all one by one. Obviously, the more, the merrier, and seeing as these bunnies are non-hostile creatures, you will be one naughty individual, which will lead to many Many crap eye coming to say hello, making this not only an amazing food farm, but one of the best Krampus farms as well. As for loot gathering between waves, do your best to get what lies on the outside edges for now. But why the scarecrows and flowers? Well that is to spawn and freeze both birds and butterflies, two more additional non-hostile creatures. So they are just to make the Krampus side of the farm even more efficient. And the best part, bunnymen respawn after but one day. So you'll be farming, killing, and gathering over and over until them dwarf stars vanish. And oh boy, will the loot be plentiful. Even without gathering the whole shebang, this method will allow for insane pierogi production as meat and veg will be coming out of your ears. So use some of it to get them eggs too, and you'll soon see that you'll have more food than you know what to do with. And once the stars are out, it's time to play a little space bar simulator as you gather everything under the sun. But note that the meat should be a priority, as it'll be real close to spoiling. And that's why I recommend setting up a temporary camp around here with ice boxes and drying racks galore. I mean, just look at this amount of food. And that's with me not even farming it the whole time and already hanging about 40 pieces of meat. It's absolutely insane. But, for something a bit more on the simple side, why not pit mob against mob and sit back and enjoy the violence? Bunnies and spiders are a good combination, seeing as they both emerge at night and regen fairly quickly. Furthermore, putting them to work against big bads isn't a bad idea, and you can even equip them with gear to help you out. The only thing with this method is that you'll only be able to fight Her Majesty at dusk or night, seeing as those are the only times bunnies are out. That being said, they will remain out for as long as the combat is going. But with enough chop power in you helping out with the little grumbles, you'll quickly see how useful these guys are as they melt that health away right before your eyes. So there you have it everyone, a quick look at the bunnymen mobs and don't starve together, and how to go about handling them to your liking. Any questions, please ask. Take care for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.